God's mercies are innumerable, His grace, His love. Where will we be if He didn't have so much compassion on us? Where will we be if not for God on our side? church, Lord. And so we just, we're grateful. We appreciate everything that you're doing. Not that we're deserving, but we recognize that it's only because of Christ Jesus, yeah. your son, that we have the best possible existence. We have the abundant life, and we thank you for that. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died in the worst possible way, so that we might have a right to the tree of life, so that we could be saved, set apart for your use. We recognize that uh, our old life is that. It's just that it's a thing of the past. We now walk in what the scripture calls newness of life. We're new creatures. Old things pass away. We look forward to the certainty that you have for us in the future. Lord, we know you're going to bless us. And so we just lift our hands in the sanctuary. We offer you honor, praise, and glory because nobody else could do this. Only you could have done such a thing. And so we want to set you apart right now as our Lord and our King. I pray a special blessing for all those under the sound of my voice, for all of our men. Continue to help them to be strong. Yes. Hold them by the hand, Lord. Nurture them as only you can as our Father. Touch each and every one of them. Help them to be the leaders 
of their household and in this world that you called them to be. Keep them from every wicked thing that would try to overrun them and overtake them. Cause them uh, to be diligent, oh God, and diligent in study, Father, in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the power that's in work through those image bearers, Lord, right now. I pray for all of the women, Lord, that you'll continue to put your uh, choices blessing on them. Let the anointing flow all over them, mind, spirit, soul. Let them be whole, nothing missing, nothing broken, Lord. Cause them to be able to serve you, and, and we thank God for the <laughs> how they're adorned on the outside, but we pray most importantly that they'll be adorned, adorned with you on the inside. Cause them to be able to speak a word in due season to those around them, to be able to nurture and care and, and have that compassion that only you could give them, oh God. Yes. Bless and touch each and every one of our women. Lord, protect them from any hurt, harm, or danger that would try to take them or trap them. Bless their minds. Help them to be able to think freely and clearly. And any burden uh, that would try to destroy them, raise them up right now. Let them know that they're beautiful. And that you made them and they're made in your image. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the world tries to put on them. Yeah. That they belong to you and they're special because you said so. Yeah. And you have made them, oh God. Yes. I pray for our children finally, yes. Lord. Touch them as well. We know they're only children. They don't necessarily know their left from their right. But you know the plans that you have for them. So nurture them as well. Protect them. Guide their steps so that they can grow to be the men and women that you will have them to be as they get older. Touch their little hearts, touch their little minds, bless their health, their strength, and help us to be able to raise them in a way that seems fit in your sight, Father. We finally ask that you will touch us, open our heart, and we can receive your word. Help us to be spiritual giants out here, Lord. We don't want to be weak in any area. We want to get better every single day. And we will surely return to give you the praise and the testimony because it does belong to you. It's in Jesus' name we receive it all and give thanks. Amen. 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 A good, good afternoon again to everybody. I do thank God for each and every one of you. And I trust that our service has been a blessing um, mm-hmm. to everyone in attendance. And so as we get into it, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Mike, Brother Jason, will y'all bring up the whiteboard for me? Can I borrow you can I, can I borrow you for like just about five minutes? Can I borrow y'all first thing? And I may not have to, but I, I wanna see, I got a feeling they may pick you may be a part of it. So I just I need to borrow you for just five minutes. Can you just give me five minutes? I promise you I won't be done. Oh, oh, don't y'all start. Don't y'all start it.
how it works. You get to choose three people to represent y'all for these three questions. One person for each question. One's easy, one, and I'm gonna have to remember off the top of my head because it's in my iPad, the questions I have. But one's easy, one medium, and one is, is, is kind of difficult, okay? But you can teach, I mean, you can uh, pick three people, three different people to answer each question. Does everybody understand that? Do I need to say it again? No, you, you can, you're part of it too, Pastor. Oh, That's why I say a first lady may want to, they may want to choose you, because I want to make it easy as possible. Pastor said he out, so I'm sorry, y'all. That's, 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 that's one of this uh, Bible soldier you have for this question. But you'll get one, it's almost like who wants to be a millionaire. You get one opportunity to ask the audience. And so if you don't know what you can ask the audience. Okay, so who, who do y'all know? Who, what three people do y'all want to answer these questions? That's what I said. The first lady, I was, I was almost evangelist. <laughs> and they, that's the one that. Thank you, Sister Mina. Thank you, Brother Michael. Appreciate y'all. Who, who's the third person? So we got first lady, evangelist. And Victoria. And Sister Victoria. All right. Let me, man, hold on a second. Let me write it on well, the Why don't we get a man there? Why don't we get Brother Mike? Yeah, but even Brother Mike, look at a man. Yeah, we can put a man in the middle. <laughs> So question number one, what 
are the three given names of Adam and Eve's sons? You want to answer that? Okay. First topic? Yeah. 
verse, give me verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Give me through 21. 21? Mm-hmm. Unto Adam also, and to... Oh, I'm sorry, 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 okay. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. 20. And Adam called unto his wife's name Eve, because she was mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. That's it? Mm-hmm. All right, so Adam and Eve, the, and the reason, uh, especially for our, our new uh, members and our guests, the reason we've been doing this study on the matriarchs and the patriarchs, we're showing, uh, starting at the beginning, how we got to Jesus Christ. That's, that's the first thing. We're showing what was God's plan. You know, why did Jesus have to come? What was the purpose for why did his son die? And number two, what we're looking at, what, we're, what we get by default is discovering these were just regular, regular folks like mm-hmm. you and me. So I, I don't have to look at Adam and Eve like superheroes. I don't have to look at them like Spider-Man or Batman. Nope, that's not an excuse. They're regular people just like you and me, but they have faith. What does God really require from us but to do good, love, mercy, and believe him? And so as we're reading this, the Bible is bare. It's naked. It, it shows everything. Their faults, their flaws, their successes, their triumphs. But God's way has always been, I'm going to put man in the best possible position. That's right. Adam and Eve, they were, they were given paradise. Mm-hmm. Through the, the paradise experience, they were to come to know who God was. Uh-huh. Brother Marcus, they're getting to, to walk with God and talk with God every day in the cool of the day. Hear God walking in the garden. Right, hear his voice just walking in the garden. Adam, Eve, what y'all want to talk about today? What you want to learn? What you want to know? All they had to do was sit in the garden and dress it. Keep it. Yeah. Me and they, they had a job like first lady, basically. Oh, yeah. They were just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> but that was God. That was God's best. That, that showed how he felt about man. That's right. He put them in the best possible position. Mm-hmm. Even with Adam. Adam, he, he brought all the animals to Adam. He said, what do you want this to be called? Whatever you call it, that's what it's going to be. But notice, Adam looked around. God looked around. There was no help he found for Adam. So what does God do? Him being the father that loves us, that nurtures us, that's kind to us, he takes of his flesh after he causes a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and brings him the most beautiful thing he could ever imagine. Adam knew what life was like without Eve. Mm-hmm. And so when he got her, his whole heart was gone. Yeah. That's why whatever Eve wanted to do, That's it. Adam said, oh, you want to eat of the tree? Yeah, it's wrong, but you my baby, so we're going to eat of the tree together. Like, that's, that was the love he had for his wife. Yeah. Because God had made something so beautiful and great in his image. And we are made in the image of God. We have to remember that. We have to carry ourselves knowing that we're not just fleshly beings that's running around destroying our body, destroying our mindset and our mentality. We have to treat ourselves like we're made in the image of God. That's right. Amen. What happens when sin comes in is, and Sister April just read that, it destroyed the fellowship that Adam and Eve had with God. Mm-hmm. So now they're banished from paradise. They no longer get communion and fellowship with God. So that relationship is severed. Mm-hmm. Jesus comes that we can have reconciliation from what Adam and Eve did. Mm-hmm. I want to show us Jesus in every one of the patriarchs as well. Why did Jesus come? Well, we'll see glimpses and, and little bits and pieces in every one of these stories. You'll see the plan of God. Oh, that's why God did that. Oh, that's why God did that. What Adam and Eve lost, Jesus comes on the scene and says, I've come to seek and save that which was lost. So he comes seeking to save. He just wants the people come. The, the, the scripture tells us that Jesus looked on the people 
like a shepherd, mm -hmm. having compassion on them, because he said they were like sheep That's without right. a shepherd. That's, That's, right. Right. That's how God looks at us. He knows we're just crazy mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. He knows, like, man, these people don't know nothing. That's right. So he comes and he drags us into salvation. He teaches us his way. Like we talked about in Sunday school, he teaches us his standards That's so that right. we can have good success. Amen? Right. Amen. Genesis 4. Give me Genesis 4 and verses 1 through 10. And Adam knew his, Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Okay, so Adam and Eve now start to have some babies. Mm -hmm. The problem is. This is not like God forming man of this ground and breathing in him the breath of living, uh, of, of what the scripture calls the breath of life, right? Mm -hmm. This is now Cain and Abel, who the scripture says were made in the image of Adam. All right, go ahead, Pastor. And she had gained back his brother Abel. She has a son, Cain and Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Abel was a shepherd. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Cain was a farmer. Mm -hmm. And in the process of time, he came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground mm -hmm. an offering unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Abel, he also brought of the first thing of his flock mm -hmm. and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. God didn't have any respect. Okay, so now we, we're past Adam and Eve. We're, we're at the next door. <laughs> Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel represent the division that happens when sin enters the world. Right? right? So we, we're now wondering. Eve is like, oh my goodness, I, I've eaten of this tree. Adam's like, man, what have we done? Nobody knows. Cain and Abel make it clear the, the repercussions of sin. Before they may not have known it. It's like, man, we did something bad, but, but what does this mean? What does sin mean? What, what does it entail? Right? Now we're figuring out, oh, this is what sin is. This is what sin entails. Sin leads to death. The wages of sin is yeah. still yeah. That's death. Right. That's right. So what Cain and Abel were a result of was this. We understand through the scriptures there's going to be a time where if we don't deal with our sin, uh -huh. it's going to eventually overtake us. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's what God wants us to understand. He, he's long suffering. We know it's God's yes, patient. God will give us a thousand, million, yeah. billion, change, trillion yeah, chances. Yeah. But we have to understand at some point, you know, our, our sin is just waiting for an opportunity to overtake us. And that, mm -hmm. that's what leads to death. That's Not right. only physical death, but more importantly, spiritual death. Yeah, our sin will lead to physical death. Mm -hmm. But the more important thing is, it leads to separation from the Lord forever. That's right. And, and that's how we want Okay, first. And Cain was very wrong, and his countenance fell. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrong? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, see in life the So God, God even tells Cain, Cain's offering is rejected. Why was Cain's offering rejected? This question for the classroom. It wasn't the best. It wasn't his very best. Mm -hmm. Why was Abel's offer accepted? Offering accepted? Mm -hmm. It came from his heart. It, it, came from his heart. it was what the Lord wanted. Yeah, it was his best. Cain did not give his best. And so that's another illustration. The two mindsets operating in the world today are righteousness, Abel, yeah. unrighteousness, Cain. What was Cain's problem? Cain simply didn't want to obey. That's it. He, didn't care. Right. he knew what to do, but said, nah, not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Abel said, Lord, you, you deserve my everything. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's it. Like when we belong to the Lord, we're saying, Lord, you, belong, you, you deserve the best I got. My life's not my own anyway. God right. saved me. I was headed right. to hell. I was evil. Mm -hmm. I was ready to be destroyed. I didn't deserve anything. God saved me because he loved me. So now i got to give him everything because it belongs to him anyway. Right. My very best. That's right. My best of my time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord get time for anybody else. That's right. Right. we got to give the Lord time for anybody That's else right. get time. Right. The best of my talent, That's my right. abilities. If I can sing, if I can rap, if I can dance. If I'm a computer whiz, mm -hmm. if I can bake pies, That's if I can do maintenance, if I'm a construction worker, if I'm a janitor, whatever my talent or my ability is, mm -hmm. it's done unto the Lord. That's right. Right. That's the favor of God will find us when we're operating in our purpose. That's right. Right? Yeah. My gift sure is, is not who I am, That's but right. because of who I am, I use my gift yeah. to the Lord. That's right. Right. And what happens? My gift makes room. Make room. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. wonder how can he sweep those streets so good? Like,
perfected is because the Spirit of the Lord is there. I'm righteous. But when we're righteous in the, in, in the way of able, we give the Lord a spirit of excellence. He gets the best of my time, my talent, and my treasure. I don't have to love money. I don't have to wonder where my, my next meal is going to come from. I don't have to wonder if the Lord is going to provide for me. It all belongs to him. So I can give to, to our church. I can give to the poor. I can give to my family. And even if I don't see a dime back, I know the Lord is going to provide yes, he himself. Yes, he he ain't going to leave the righteous to say Or his seed, bed, and bread. He's going to take care of us, our children, and right. our children's children. That's, That's right. a promise that he gave us. Right. Amen. 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 Two more verses from that. Amen. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Mm -hmm. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I don't know. And my brother, and my brother, and my brother, and he said, What has uh, thou done? The voice of thy brother is, What have you done, Cain? Your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Mm. The unrighteous seeks to destroy the righteous without a cause. That's Other than the cause that they hate righteousness. They hate doing it, meaning they hate doing it in God's way. We have to embrace That's why it's so important. Sometimes the word tells us to do stuff we don't want to do. Yeah. But it's important for us to embrace it because it's God's way. We may not understand it fully why God wants us to do it. But if we just trust him, mm -hmm. at the right point in time, he'll bring it back on yeah. why we should do it. Okay? Next, y'all remember what we talked about after this? Y'all, looking at y'all notes, ain't y'all? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Enoch, who answered that question? Was that your question? Mm -hmm. What was that? No, it's just evangelist. That was evangelist? Enoch. Oh, I'm not going to go over that for time's sake. I'm not going to turn there. But we, we know it talks about Enoch. Enoch is not very uh, mentioned very much in the Bible. Uh, Genesis, here Genesis, I think maybe Jude. And he rules or maybe maybe the only three spots he's mentioned. But his story is still uh, as powerful because Enoch walked with the Lord. And the scripture says God took him. Took him. Yeah. That's right. And later in the New Testament we find out that means that he was translated to be with God and not see or taste death. But and the scripture says, Well, why? Everybody else was dying, everybody else was falling out, everybody else was being ruled by sin. Everybody else had this sadness of knowing, man, I'm about to clock out of here. Mm -hmm. But why Enoch? Why did Enoch get to just go be with God and not even taste death? Mm -hmm. The scripture says he walk with that him? he had this testimony that he believed that he God. 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 It immediately alert, alerts us after that scripture. Well, how do we please God? Well, without faith, mm -hmm. it's impossible to please God. Okay, so now I got it. That if I want to walk with God, that means I got to have faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, so what is faith? Now I got to know what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, yeah. the evidence of things not seen, right? Yeah. But more importantly, in layman's terms, faith is believing what God has spoken and said and knowing or fully embracing yeah. or being fully persuaded right. that he's going to bring it to pass. That's it. That's it. What he said he's going to perform. Yes. That's what faith is. Yes. So I know what God has spoken over me. Mm -hmm. I know what God has spoken over That's my right. children, mm -hmm. and I'm going to embrace it. That's That's it. Right. I, I don't. I'm not looking back to what I used to be. No. I'm not looking to my right to see no. what my neighbors are getting. No. I'm not looking at the success of That's the world right. and saying I want that. I want this. That's I'm right. saying the plan and the path that you have for me, Lord. That's I'm embracing that whole That's, That's, That's what faith is. That's and faith is so powerful. Once you embrace the plan of God, it doesn't matter what distractions come your way. Right. People won't be trying to push you off course. Well, I remember what you used to be. I remember what you did. Now nah, you did this back to me in, in eighth grade. Now nah, you did this to that man. You did this. Nope. I'm okay. focused. That's fine. The Lord don't hold none of that on my account. No. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. All he holds me accountable for is right now. And right now, I'm walking in righteousness. That's right. I'm walking by the Spirit. That's There's it. no condemnation. That's right. I'm just walking out of here. I ain't got to worry about the judgment of God. Because I'm free. Yeah. I'm free from that whole life. That's right. Amen. All right. And so the final piece to the puzzle that we've discovered in the series on the patriarchs and the matriarchs. N-O-A-H. A name I love. No arrest. What do we, and for the time, is it 105 yet? 
get one on five on the dot, so I'm done. So I'll, I'll end it with this. I'll just take five minutes and ask y'all, what have we learned or discovered real briefly? Just give us something. What have we learned or discovered about Noah that we can take away so far? Because we're not done with the story yet, but what, what are some of the things that maybe have stuck out to us? And it's because we heard the story of Noah a million times, right? Noah on the ark with the animals. That's all we, we've seen it, we've talked about it, we've heard it since we were babies, right? But what are some of the, the important things that, that we think from, from this lesson? What I can take from it is that Nora obeyed God, even though it hadn't rained, hadn't seen no rain, <laughs> yes. God told him to build an ark, and the ark was on dry land, but God told him to do it, and Nora obeyed God, yes, and he was saved, mm -hmm. and his house. thing that stood out to me is that it made mention specifically of him finding grace in the eyesight of the Lord. So, yes. Like he was chosen. Mm -hmm. So Because of that, I really expected him to be great and extraordinary, but we don't really talk about that. He was chosen for the art. But that was just profound to me. Hey, That's an amazing uh, observation. Yes, the whole, the, the scripture right before uh, I think it's Genesis 6 and 8. Mm -hmm. and eight. The scripture right before that one through seven talks about the world's corrupt. God hates sin. God ready to destroy the world. He's tired of it. The thoughts of man's heart is only evil, continually, consistently. There's no righteous, no person is righteous in the world. Like by God's standards, nobody is cutting it. Yeah. And then verse eight, which is one of the I think ten words, is one of the best ten words in the Bible, but no amount grace in the eyes of God. That's the only reason we're here, y'all. And we know that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So anytime we see grace in the Old Testament, it's pointing us to Jesus Christ. That's right. And if we, it, it's important to understand this. This is why we, we, try to, we try to minimize, well, not us, but the world tries to minim, minimize Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus was just a, a prophet. Or he was one of many prophets. He was one of many gods. Mm -hmm. That's not going to cut it. The reason we exalt Jesus is, is because God has exalted him. He, he's exalting him, and, and according to Philippians 2, giving him a name that's above every name. Yeah. That's because the whole book, 66 books, is written about one person. That's why we can start with Adam and Eve, and I can tell you and show you Jesus in every book. Because that's what it's about. Psalms, and we've been reading our Psalms, David said, he prophesied of what Jesus would say, Lo, I've come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So when Jesus shows up, he's just fulfilling what's already been told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the grace of God. He's the reason why we're here. Why we get to breathe today. God can see our imperfections, our anger, our, our envy, our strife. And he can overlook it all, even though he's a holy God. He can overlook it all because he sees what his son did for us. The character of God is seen in how he sent his son. We want to know, well, what, what is God like? You know, we want the wrong things. Well, what does God look like? Where did he come from? How did he get here? That don't matter, no, right? No. It, it's, it's of no importance. Mm -hmm. What's important is the character and the mind of God. That's right. God's character is seen in the fact that he loved us and sent his son to die for us while we were yet sinners. Mm -hmm. God's character is shown in how he provides for us and provided for us even when we didn't know who he was. That's right. How he gives us grace and mercy and long suffering. How, as Sister April said, the whole world deserved death right. and to be yeah. destroyed. Mm -hmm. But Noah found grace uh -huh. in the eyes. Of, that means, no, we, we, I always say this. Noah deserved to be destroyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Noah wasn't in this pot by himself where, no. God, I'm the one. Save me. Right. No. All were unrighteous. No. But the grace of God chose Noah That's right. and declared him righteous because of his faith. That's it. We're sitting here because God declared us righteous and chose That's right. us. That's he right. chose, we didn't, any, I'm 36 years old. I got saved when I was probably about, I would say 2013. That, that's when I really recognized, oh my goodness, even though I had been in church my whole life, uh -huh. the Lord had to show me, dude, you, you're not there. You, you don't got it. And so, so around circa 27, 28. That's when, when I got converted. But what if I had passed away at 29? 
at, at 25. Mm -hmm. 25 had, I didn't make, 25 clocked out at 24. Yeah. Never came to a knowledge of who Jesus was. I would have been lost forever. So it's never a moment where I get to stand up and say, oh, I got it. God saved me because I was righteous. I chose the Lord. I'm a product of his divine grace and mercy. All of us in this room, we're a product of his divine grace and mercy. But what's the difference between you and this person? What about why did this person die early and you didn't? I'm a product of his divine grace and mercy. Because I deserve the same fate. Yeah, so that means the rest of my life, now that this revelation has come, mm -hmm. is devoted to serving him. Right. Right. It yeah. doesn't matter what comes. It doesn't matter what persecution comes. It doesn't yeah. matter what uh, you know isolation comes mm -hmm. from serving the Lord. We have to serve the Lord because we recognize mm -hmm. what he's done for us. Right. Amen. 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 Anybody else have anything before I sit down?